Hi! In this video, I'll present how software developers use GitHub for day-to-day -day development. We'll go through GitHub's pull requests, actions, and issues using a GitHub repository I created for live examples. So, let's begin. So, for this video, I created a new GitHub repository, which is a very simple and basic JavaScript repository, which only contains two functions called create three and create four, and they return accordingly these values. So let's say the product team has a new requirement of a new feature, which would be to create five. So first of all, we have to clone the repository. You go to the green button of code, then copy the URL for the HTTPS or SSH and go to your terminal and hit git clone, paste the URL. Then you would open your favorite IDE. I chose VS Code and you can see that I'm on the main branch. Let's start with pulling the latest, re uh, uh, latest changes in case any other developer made any changes or merged any changes to the main branch. So we'll start with git pull. And we can see already up to date. Great. Now let's create a new branch for our new feature. Git checkout hyphen b. And then let's start with a feature prefix and call it add five. Great. We can close the terminal and open our source, fi source file and create a new function. Function create five and it will return five. Let's add it to the exports. And let's go to the source control and we want to commit these changes. So we'll have to create add a commit message, add create five. We can see the changes over here. Click on the plus button and the check button to commit it. And let's publish the branch because it, we only created it locally so far. Great. Let's go to our GitHub repository and we can see that there is a notification that a new branch was put. Let's create a new pull request. Let's start with a feature prefix and we'll call it add create five. Great, now we have two parts. The first part that we can see that are, there are checks that are being executed for this new pull request. These checks are running the tests that we have in our repository. The next step would be to add someone to review it. You should not merge a pull request without having someone to review it. So we have another user I created and let's request them to review this pull request. I'll switch to another GitHub window where I'm logged in with this other user. We can differentiate them with the background. So this one has a bright background. Let's refresh the page, go to pull requests and we can see the pull requests over here. And we can see that my original GitHub user requested our review. So let's click on add your review and we can see the files change. So we can see that we added a function, but we should ask what about a test? And let's add a review, start a review and finish your review. And right now we want to request changes, not approve the pull request or just comment. Great. Now let's go back to the original GitHub user. We can see the notification that we requested changes. And we, uh, there is a notification saying that changes are requested. Let's go back to VS Code and add the test. So we're on the same branch so far and let's open the test file and let's create a faulty test. Why? Because we want to verify that our GitHub checks are really running the tests and see that the, uh, the check would fail because the test is faulty. So we'll add assert for create five and we forgot to change the value from four to five. So let's create a new commit, add a test for create five. 
stage the changes, commit them. You see the progress bar on the left. Great. Now let's go back to our GitHub repository. Let's refresh the page. And checks are being executed again. And also we still have the changes requested. Let's wait a couple of seconds for the checks to finish. And we can see that some checks were not successful. Let's click on one of them, details. And we can see that we threw an error. The expression evaluated to have fa a falsy value. Okay, let's go back to our VS Code window and let's fix the test. So we'll change the value from four to five and commit the change. Fix the test of create five stage, commit. Let's wait for the progress bar on the left. Let's go back to our pull request. And the checks are executed again. Now the checks have passed. Let's ask for another review from other, our other GitHub user. Let's go to our other GitHub user and refresh the page. And we can see new changes since we last viewed. We can go to files change and we can see that indeed a test was added. So we can add a comment. I see a test was added and type great. And we can start a review and finish our review and approve it. Submit review. Great. Let's go to back to our original GitHub user. And since we, it was approved, we can also resolve the conversation. Now we see the checks have passed and we had a, an approving review so we can merge the pull request. Merge. Also, let's delete the branch because it will not be used again because we've already merged the pull request. Let's go back to our code tab and we can see the last commit of the merge we just executed and we can see that the checks are being run again. Software developers can use different checks for different actions. For example, in one pull request, when you just make a commit, a different kind of checks can be executed compared to when we merge code to main, because when we merge code to the main, we want to deploy it. So this could be a different set of checks or actions that we want to take. Now let's go to the issues tab and we can create a new issue here. And we can say that uh, create five is not used and can be deleted. We can submit a new issue. Now we can create a new pull request that would fix this issue. Let's go to the VS Code window, create a new terminal. Let's switch back to our main branch because we have nothing to do anymore with this branch. Git checkout main and git pull to get the latest changes. Now we can create a new branch again, fix, and we can call it remove create five. And we can remove create five we can see the changes remove create five. commit and publish the branch with the new changes we just made.
So we can see we just pushed new changes to our new branch. And also, if we go back to the issues, we can see it has a number, it's number five. Coincidentally, uh, pull requests and issues use the same progress of numbers. So if our latest pull request was number four, we can go to the pull request tab, go to close, and we can see the latest one was number four. Now the issue has number five. So let's go back to the code tab, compare and pull request, create a new pull request, remove, create five. And we can say this solves issue five. We can see there is a hyperlink to it. And if we'll click on the preview, we can see a hyperlink to the issue we opened. So we can create the pull request and again, we would ask someone to review it, make sure the checks have passed, and then merge the pull request. Last part would be to talk about the actions. So the checks that we've seen running every time were added through the actions tab. So for example, we can add a new workflow. What I added was Node.js action. So in it, I would not go into many details, but I can choose which steps I want. So for example, here I use the NPM test to run our tests, but the actions tab would require a much more lengthy vi video focusing on it. And I would recommend to search for another video, which has more details about this topic. And that would be all. Thank you for joining me and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it and subscribe to my channel and see you next time.